my family. <laughs> Hello, thank you for joining me today. Thank you, all of you, for joining me today. Many of you already know how uh, the didgeridoo works, but I'm going to talk to you and to others in the video <clears throat> on the didgeridoo. This is a demonstration video, and there's a lot to talk about with the didgeridoo. Hopefully, I'll be able to contain it within the minute uh, limit that I have. Didgeridoo is the first wind instrument that was ever created. It was the first one. And how it was created was the aboriginals in Australia were out one day and they had noticed that the termites had eaten out the center of a piece of a log. And one curious aborigine came up and he looked in it and he saw that it was almost hollow and he saw the termites inside that ate the soft center of the trunk and he went to blow it out. And when he went to blow it out, this is what happened. He heard a sound. So thus, the first wind instrument was created. It's very old, and it's very authentic. Now, this particular didgeridoo was handcrafted by my good friend Robert. We took a piece of cedar wood, and we cut it in half. You really can't see it from that far away. But we divided the piece of wood in half, split it into two halves. See the line here in the middle? Split it into two halves, and then we drew lines down the center of it, getting wider toward the bottom. And if you look here at the top, you can see the mouthpiece that was created. And then I'll flip it over, and you'll see the bell that was created. It's thinner cut toward the bell, and it's a thicker cut toward the mouthpiece. So it creates a resonance, and there is back pressure that is uh, created whenever you blow into it. Now, <clears throat> the didgeridoo is a circular breathing instrument. I can do sounds like this. But in order to play it properly, the way the aboriginals do, and to get the most out of the instrument, you need to be able to circular breathe. Now, circular breathing is has been done by many different cultures uh, in our current history. Oh, struggling to remember the name of the trumpet player. I wish I wrote that down. The trumpet player would uh, play it where he would fill up his cheeks with air, and when he was done breathing out the pressure of air from his lungs, the little bit of air that was in his cheeks would compress slightly, giving him an opportunity to breathe in air back into his lungs while cheeks compressed like billows, like a, uh, a bagpipe player. The big bagpipes uh, hold air, and the bagpipe player will fill the bagpipe uh, bag with air, <laughs> and then when he compresses it, it continues to give... Uh, sound through the pipes as he fills it back up with air. Now I'm going to give a quick demonstration of circular breathing. I'm going to play for just a couple minutes. So, that was circular breathing. Now, a lot of times over the years when I played the didgeridoo, a lot of people would uh, come up afterwards not knowing that I was circular breathing, and I played for 20 minutes or more, and they would ask me a ridiculous question, how do you have that much air in your lungs? Well, I don't have that much air in my lungs. I'm able to cycle the breath through the process, and I'm able to continue to play, and I could play up to an hour uh, or more as I desire. Now, I want to talk to you about the didgeridoo itself and how it's played. It's the same as a trumpet, a trombone, where you have a mouthpiece, a French horn. <clears throat> it's done through ohmature. Now, again, I want to show you the tip of this. If you can see how large it is, it's about an inch in diameter. And it is very much larger than the trumpet, the trombone, or the French horn, because they have very small 
uh, mouthpieces, or another example would be a chauffeur or a chauffeur, which is a ram's horn, which has a very small um, mouthpiece to it. This one has a very large one, so my armature is very loose. It's, it, when I describe it to people, I say it's like, if you want to play the didgeridoo, uh, have you ever uh, blown bubbles in the bathtub when you were a kid? Remember how you made the bubbles, whatever, the same thing. It's a very loose. Now I do it through the side of my mouth, and this is the sound that I get. Now I want to talk to you about the key range. The didgeridoo is not like a flute. It's not like a trumpet. It doesn't have keys to it. You can't change the pitch or the key. Or you can't change the pitch, but you can't change the key to where you can hit different notes. It's going to remain in the same note. Now this is in the key of E. And when I play this, I can slightly change the variance of it, but it goes from flat to sharp. That's the only thing that I can do key range with this instrument. That's the only thing that I can do with this instrument. I can keep it in the key of E, I can go flat, I can go sharp. So if I'm going to play this with other instrumentation, they have to be able to work in the circle of fifths out of the key of E. And that would go from, <clears throat> the circle of fifths would be uh, E, F, D. And it would cycle back and forth around. And you can do a lot of songs that way. Um, many different songs I can play to. But it always remains in the key of E. So the didgeridoo ends up becoming a bass instrument as well as a percussion instrument. Now I'm going to give you some examples of how I can do bass and percussion at the same time. Now you're going to hear a steady undercurrent in the key of E, but I'm going to end up doing some rhythms with it. Are you listening to me? Paying attention? Okay. <laughs> So that was a good example of rhythms hitting, and at the same time I had a constant bass undercurrent. <clears throat> going along with it. Now lastly, I want to talk to you about the functions of the didgeridoo. This is nothing more than a megaphone. I'll do my armature at the tip of it, which comes from my lips vibrating, allowing air to come out, which holds the key because of the back pressure. But all of those different sounds that you heard come from inside of my body. They don't come from the instrument themselves. All those different things are uh, a reflection of what I'm actually doing internally inside of my body. I'll give you a few examples. <clears throat> this is just a steady uh, armature. Now, I'm going to do uh, a tongue roll where I go while I'm doing the armature with my lips. some other things. I'll start out by going right there I'm going da, 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 da. I'm touching my tongue to my roof of my mouth and sometimes to my teeth and breaking up the airflow so I goes and also you can add into it different vocals because your vocal cords still have air passing through them and you can do pitch and range as if you're singing. So here we go. So all of those things are happening underneath the armature. I'm able to get rhythm with my tongue through the rolling of the tongue or the tapping of the tongue. And I can do it in different types of ways. Uh, Sometimes you can go, and it gives that same rhythm along with the armature, and you can also add in vocals, and you can also add in um, a horn sound where you do the normal armature, 